flowering plants, made their first appearance during the early Cretaceous. At first they were rare and not diverse, but steadily they became increasingly prominent, and by the end of the Cretaceous, they dominated the vegetation in most parts of the world. Fossils floras from the earliest part of the Cretaceous consist mainly of ferns, conifers, cycads and groups of extinct seed plants, they look very similar to fossil floras from the Jurassic. By about 130 million years ago, traces of the earliest flowering plants provide the first hints of evolutionary changes to come. The earliest reliable fossils of flowering plants are pollen grains from the middle of the early Cretaceous. They can be recognized as angiosperm pollen by their distinctive wall structure. Next, by about 125 million years ago, well-preserved fossils from eastern North America and Portugal record the first appearance of angiosperm leaves and the earliest fossil flowers. These flowers are all very small, but have the same basic structure seen in flowering plants today. Details of their pollen-producing structures, and of the organs in which the seeds develop, are also exactly like those of modern angiosperms, but different from the reproductive parts of other seed plants. Several of the earliest flowering plants from the early Cretaceous were members of groups that are still alive today, such as the water lily and wintergreen families. The Chloranthaxiae, an unusual family of living angiosperms, were especially prominent at this time. There are also fossils of early monocots related to modern aeroids. By about 100 million years ago, the number of modern angiosperm groups that can be recognized had increased further. They included plants very similar to living magnolia and bay laurel, as well as early eudicots related to modern plane trees, sacred lotus and boxwood. Flowering plants continued to diversify rapidly through the late Cretaceous. By about 70 million years ago palms and gingers had evolved, which suggests that the variety of existing monocots had also increased. Among eudicots, early dogwoods and witch hazels appeared to heathers. Plants related to modern oaks, walnuts and hazels appeared in eastern North America and western Europe, and southern beaches are known from the southern hemisphere at this time. In parallel with the modernization of angiosperms, other groups of plants also showed important changes. Among ferns, archaic forms from earlier in the Mesozoic became less important, as did cycads, Bennett Italians, and a key family of extinct conifers. At the same time, new groups appeared and plant life as a whole began to look more modern. For example, relatives of modern pines are known from the early Cretaceous and true pines became widespread in the late Cretaceous. Several features distinguish all angiosperms from other seed plants, but most obvious is the flower itself. Recently, beautifully preserved fossil flowers have been discovered in many parts of the world from several different stages in the Cretaceous. They provide important new insights into the evolution of flowers. The earliest angiosperm flowers were small. Many were bisexual, but others were unisexual and produced only pollen or seeds. Very few had distinct petals. More typical showy petals appear later in the fossil record and are common in flowers from the late Cretaceous. The structure of flowers became increasingly specialized in the late Cretaceous. For example, petals became fused into a tube and the carpels were often fused into an ovary with a single pollen receiving structure. Some of these changes probably indicate increasingly sophisticated interactions with insect pollinators. Several key groups of pollinators, such as bees and modern kinds of moths and butterflies, are first known from the late Cretaceous. The fossil plant Nathorstiana is known only as a collection of molds and casts taken from a single location in Germany. Its root-bearing base grew downward, producing new roots and shedding older ones as it went. The root-growing tip was sunk in a central depression and covered with a membrane for protection. The radiically symmetrical shape of the young bases divided into two and then four lobes as the plant matured, this maturation indicates age, not the very variable size shown by the fossils. Nathorstiana's leaves and reproductive organs are unknown but it is generally regarded as a lycophyte and part of a series of plants that gradually reduced in size between the Triassic Pleuromea and the living isoetes.
Weichselia was a successful genus of tree-like ferns that formed dense sward, rather like modern bracken. The plants had palmate leaves with 5 to 15 fingers or pinnae, each containing 14 to 20 spore producing sporangia arranged in single rows on either side of the central rib. Middle Cretaceous climate change seems to have eliminated Weichselia. This tree-like fern belonged to the family Metoniaceae, which died out throughout most of the world by the late Cretaceous, perhaps outcompeted by flowering plants. Today, only two living genera exist and are found in Malaysian Borneo. This very unusual tree fern, placed in a family of its own, has been described from well-preserved petrified specimens found in many locations in the northern hemisphere. What appears to be a trunk is a false trunk, made up of a large number of stems surrounded by a thick mat of fibrous adventitious roots, that is, roots arising from a part of the plant other than a main root source. Sporulings grew vertically upward and branched or dichotomized repeatedly, while giving off more adventitious roots that grew downward and bound the stems together. The result is that the base of the trunk was almost entirely composed of adventitious root fibers. Although no leaves have been found attached, the fossilized leaf bases show that they were produced from the sides of the stems, so the upper part of the true NK would have been covered with leaves, rather than having a single crown of leaves on top as in other forms of tree ferns. Salvinia is a living genus of small-leaved floating ferns. It has pairs of flat, oval, floating leaves attached to a rootless rhizome, and the leaves are covered with hairs to repel water. Living Salvinia, and the closely related genus Azola, are two mainly tropical ferns that have fossil records dating from the Cretaceous period onward. Both can propagate easily by growth and division. Salvinia also has highly dissected fertile leaves hanging downward into the water. They grow rounded, hard-coated sporocarps, specialized structures that produce and release spores. The sporocarps contain either a few female megasporangia, each with a single megaspore, or many male microsporangia, each with 64 microspores. Sporocarps enable the plants to survive periods of drought, only opening to release their spores when water returns. Individual megaspores are covered with a foamy layer that makes them buoyant, thereby allowing them to float on the water. Narrow, highly branched leaves are usually included in the genus of ferns called Onychiopsis. The terminal segments on the sterile leaves were almost flat, while those on the fertile leaves were slightly enlarged, with sporangia on their lower surfaces that were covered by a protective membrane called an indusium. This fern's fertile segments were similar to those of the living fern Anichium. Onychiopsis was common in Middle Jurassic and Early Cretaceous Japan, Europe and North America. This fossil fern is branched, with short, rounded leaflets it is identical to the tropical glycinia that is found growing today in open places and on the edges of forests. It has a creeping rhizome, and fronds that fro enormous by continuously dividing their side branches. Glycinia forms dense thickets by scrambling or climbing over other plants, and is a genus of the primitive Glycinaceae family, whose members have simple rhizomes covered with hairs. Its large sporangia are arranged in circles on the underside of the fronds. Glycinaceous ferns were most common in the Cretaceous, the earliest specimens were found in England. The leaves of this fern consist of repeatedly dividing, single-veined, narrow segments ending in rounded or pointed tips. When fertile, the narrowest segments have folded, pod-like structures at their end, within which are 8 to 12 sporangia containing spores that are about 80 micrometers in diameter. Schizeopsis is very similar in structure to some living species of Schizea, except for its different type of spores. It is very likely that Schizeopsis represents an early stage in the evolution of Schizea. This group of ferns often had deeply lobed leaves with the major veins branching and running to the edge OT the leaf blade. Small sporangia were scattered across the lower, hairy surface of the leaves. Hausmannia is structurally very similar to the living tea. Tropical fern Dipterus and is therefore included in the family Dipteridaceae. Paleoecological studies of groups of fossils found together suggest that Hausmannia was a streamside dweller. It was also a pioneer species, like the Dipterus, in the way it invaded open areas. These large, fossilized Bennett Italian trunks are known from many places in North America and Europe. Most Cycadioidea stems are short and barrel shaped, with a dense covering of leaf bases. In life, they had a crown of pinnate leaves at the top of the stem, they were seed plants, 
but were unlike any other group in having their reproductive organs arranged in complex flower-like structures protected by stout, spirally arranged bracts. The size of these cones varied from species to species, and most species were bisexual. Their ovules were born on a central swollen receptacle and separated by scales. The pollen organs surrounded the receptacle. It is likely that these flowers were self-pollinated, although it is possible that insects may have been involved. Velvichia mirabilis is a highly specialized gymnosperm that grows in the Namib Desert in southwest Africa. It has a very short stem, tapering down into a long taproot, and two leaves that grow continually from their bases. Individual plants produce cones that have either pollen organs or ovules, and pollination is probably achieved through insects. Pollen similar to that from this genus and the related, living ephedra is known from the late Triassic onward. It is probable that Velvichia and Ephedra diverged in the late Cretaceous, especially as both Velvichia-like and Adephra-like fossils are known from this time. These large, conifer trees from the Jurassic of Argentina bore very characteristic female cones with numerous, spirally arranged cone scales attached to a centra axis. The corresponding pollen cones are not known. Each fertile cone scale had an ovule and a smaller bract scale. Immature cones contained ovules with three-layered skin. Pollination would have been by wind, as in the living members of the genus. Mature cones contained seeds with embryos, apparently in a dormant state, some seeds were loose within the cone. It also appears likely that the seeds were not shed until the cones fell to the ground where they may have shattered on impact. The structure of the cone and the way that the seeds were dispersed is most similar to the living species Araucaria bidwellii, which is found in southern Queensland, in Australia. Fossil conifer shoots that are covered with spirals of short, stubby, scale-like leaves are called brachyphyllum. Pollen-producing cones were found on the ends of these shoots. These cones had many scales, and each scale had three pollen sacs on its underside. The leaves of brachyphyllum possessed distinctive stomata, the respiratory pores that allow plants to breathe. Brachyphyllum leaves show a number of features that indicate that they would have grown in arid environments. Pity ostrobus was a seed-bearing conifer cone. In Pity ostrobus, the seed-bearing scales were positioned in the axils, the angle between a leaf stem and the main stem, of very small bracts. The seed-bearing scales thinned toward their tips, unlike in modern pine cones. In mature cones, each ovuliferous scale had two winged seeds separated by a central ridge. The closest living relative to Pity ostrobus is Pinus, the genus that contains pines and related conifers. However, Pity ostrobus differs from Pinus in that it possessed separate bract and ovuliferous scales. In Pinus cones, the bract and ovuliferous scales were fused together and had a woody consistency. Sequoia is a genus of conifers of the bald cypress family. Also known as redwoods, they have both pollen and seed cones on the same tree. After pollination, the seed cones expand and become woody. The long, diamond-like shapes on the cone's surface consist of ovule-bearing scales and bract scales. Such cones can remain closed for 25 years after falling from the trees and may not open until stimulated by fire. This conifer leafy shoot has long, outward-spreading, spirally arranged leaves. Each leaf is needle-shaped, as thick as it is broad, and merges below into a swollen leaf cushion. Gynetzia-like leaves are very similar to the young shoots of other conifers. Similar leafy shoots in the Permian are called Walkia and those in the Triassic are called Voltzia. According to some interpretations, Gynetzia is part of the extinct conifer family Cherolepidaceae. Seed cones of two Gynetzia species are known from Belgium and Germany. This flower consisted of around 100 loosely packed helically arranged peapod shaped follicles that were attached to a long central axis. The flower was born at the tip of a branch with leaves in an alternate arrangement. Leaves associated with Archianthus had a prominent midrib and are called Liriophyllum Archianthus. Flowers are very similar to those of modern Magnolia E, which points to Archianthus as the earliest member of the family Magnoliaceae. Archifructus is a herbaceous aquatic angiosperm. It does not have petals or sepals, but it does have carpels and stamens. These are attached to an elongated stem with the staminate flowers Bellawand pistillate flowers above this ancient flower is similar in some respect to Trithoria peculiar living genus of nymphiales. <laughs>
The leaves of Maldinia were typically simple elongated angiosperm leaves flowers were radially symmetrical bisexual and about 3.5 mm in length, the flower parts were arranged in groups of three there were two whorls of three petals surrounding three whorls of three stamens the central ovary was rounded to triangular in cross section and contained a single seed five individual flowers were grouped together on the upper surface of bilo bed scale like structures these scales were then spirally arranged on an elongated axis the flower structure and the leaves of Mal Maldinia are characteristic of the living angiosperm family Lauraceae. The palmate leaves of Aureliopsoides had three distinct lobes the wide base of the leaf stalks suggest that the leaves were deciduous and shed seasonally the plants themselves were small shrubby and probably grew in warm temperate to subtropical deciduous forests in middle and high level northern latitudes during the late Cretaceous Aureliopsoides was a forerunner of the maples that came later. These lobed fossil leaves from North America are known as Aurelia however fossils such as this demonstrate the difficulties in identifying leaves by comparing them to similar living species in the past the genus Aurelia has been used lossly to describe fossil leaves that appear to have affinities with the living family Aureliaceae. Greater than consequently, it has become little more than a catch-all name that indicates a possible family relationship. For this reason, many Cretaceous and Paleogene records of genera living angiosperms have had to be discounted. Crednaria is the name given to large angiosperm leaves produced by trees very similar to living plane trees. The leaves were originally attached to the shoots by stalks. Individual leaves were typically broadly oval or elliptical, with rounded bases. Their margins were smooth and they had pointed a blunt apices. Leaf venation was usually pinnate, with a main vein and lateral veins. During the Middle Cretaceous, the leaves are very common in many fossil floras from all over the Northern Hemisphere, where they have been given a range of different names, such as Aurelia and Aureliopsoides. The extinct plane trees that produced Crednaria were especially common on ancient riverbanks. Living plane trees grow in similar places today. The fossilized leaves of this Cretaceous plant, together with other fossils of its fruits and seeds, are very similar to those of living Cercytophyllum. Cercytophyllum is known today from two very similar species that grow in China and Japan. Both of these are commonly called Katsura. Male and female flowers are produced on separate plants. The leaves are simple, ovate, and wider than they are long. They have a midrib and one or two pairs of basal veins that curve out toward the leaf apex. Fossil Cercytophyllum like seedlings from the Paleocene of Canada have been found in their original growth positions. This discovery suggests that this species grew on open floodplains during the late Cretaceous and the Tertiary. <laughs>